takes everything to rise above the world. One who always finds a way and against all odds simply doesn't miss. Keep it clean, keep it simple. Fox has given me some trouble in the past, so, you know, just try to stay in it. I want to clean up some putts. Other than that, my driving feels great, so it's not too windy tomorrow on Fox. We're not in that pressure situation right now. We've got 36 holes left. That's what I've been preparing for my whole life. Whatever happens, happens. Hello and welcome to round four coverage from the 2023 PDGA Pro World Championships presented by L.L. Bean. We are back on Fox Run Meadows and you're watching Jomez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colin, and Paul Ulibarri. It's moving day, the World Championships, 36 holes to go. And we've got the young 18-year-old kid sitting at the top of the World Championships. He's got some newfound confidence after his big Four series win, or excuse me, elite series win at the Ledgestone, but coming on a course that's very similar to the way that these courses are spread out. One open course, one wooded course. Chris Dickerson, who's won here before, he is in right there behind. Was it one stroke behind? He is very comfortable. Out here in the open as well, Isaac Robinson major champion he's got that monkey off the back he is going to be out here swinging big he has got a lot of confidence the last two seasons have been so incredible to see this player develop and we've talked about it a lot here he is world championships league card james proctor breakout season he is just playing so fantastic it's going to be an exciting moving day that's for sure beautiful conditions yeah, let's go into hole one, par four, 565 as the drone flies. Land about here. Pretty simple up shot into the green. There is out of bounds deep, and you got to miss one guardian here on the left. Side arm is going to be your preferred shot going into that green. First on the tee from Hillsboro, Oregon. He's representing DGA. Can we put our hands together for Cole Radalin? It'll be awesome to watch how Cole handles the nerves. This is when the nerves really, they really start Saturday at the World Championships. What and a beautiful that, shot. That's just so smooth. I mean, yeah, what else can that possibly do? You'd like to get to that white tree, and Cole gets past it. Dead center. Perfect. All right, next up from Gray, Tennessee. He is representing Discraft. Let's show some real love here for Chris Dickerson. I was going to say it's smart for you to throw putter or mid-range to try to stay away from the out-of-bounds deep on the right. But Cole, even with a mid-range, went past. Was that, that a mid he threw? I think so, yeah. I think so, too. And Chris as well, but I still think that's the smart play. And it's too easy to get up and down if you're not out of bounds. I guess if you find yourself really far on the right side, it can be kind of tricky. But aside from that, I don't think there's really a bad place to land on this fairway. Well, I like the mid-range because then it uh, Ooh, needs help. Needs help for sure. Oh, oh yeah. the backpack. Are you Let's serious? And then he moves it like, I should have moved this a minute ago. I should have moved this a minute ago. <laughs> like, they're real quick. Grab there. Oh, man, what a break. That is a nice break to start you off. I don't think I had much chance to get home. Oh, no way. Backpack. No way. I was going to say, the mid-range is nice because... Fairway driver likes to kind of push down that hill 
on the left. It is a right to left sloping fairway. And I also just think, especially at the power level we're seeing from all our contenders, that extra distance like really isn't buying yeah. you that much. I mean, you're talking about the difference of like 250 into the pin or like 210. And it's just not a, a distance break that makes any difference for these guys, yeah. considering the totally. only thing they have to miss is one guardian tree. I think with Isaac on the right side, it, it this is going to be tricky. Yeah, and he's, mm. he's not even going for it because – with not feeling 100% confident with that forehand hyzer flip, there's just no angle on that right side. That's the only bad spot on this fairway. Yeah, and right amongst those tree trunks as well. Not really a lot of room to get creative. Chris with a perfect play. Plus, easier to kind of pitch out when you know you already got one back from yeah, the course. Yeah, for sure. Can feel good about a par when <laughs> you kind of shank your tee shot. <laughs> what a lucky break! Yeah, I think if he goes out of bounds there, he probably tries to push the envelope a little, sure. b- a little bit more. Has a good sure. chance. Yeah, yep. absolutely can see that. Proctor a little bit short left, but you said number one in C one X for the season at ninety three percent. Just some ridiculous statistic. He should be pretty good there, and Cole will definitely have a birdie here on one. And Isaac will pitch up for the par. And there's that perfect putting form. Just simple motion, very rhythmic. And when he gets into the zone, it's a, it's a different type of zone for him than it is for other players. Cole's family lives kind of outside the Portland area. And I think maybe when we did a profile on him, we heard a little bit of this. But they have a little property, and he's got a course laid out there. Mm -hmm. I haven't been there yet. i got to get up with him this offseason and go check it out. But I'm told that this course, the course record is held by Cole. Surprise, surprise. And it's like five under. He told me. And I, I, I heard from a guy who's like a... Not a pro, but a guy I've played golf with, a decent okay. player. And he's like, oh, man, I played so good out there. I shot 14 up. <laughs> so <laughs> so I think maybe some of these pro tour courses, you hear us a lot of time, man, the courses are getting so hard. I think Cole might have just made himself a nightmare for us. He did. <laughs> it, and he just goes, yeah. he goes out there and just tries to make pars. So he, he's actually, his RV is parked next to mine at the campgrounds here in Vermont. And so we've played some catch. We've played some putting games and whatnot. And he was just telling me about his course. And he said, yeah, I just try to make a course that got me ready to hit gaps and late gaps turnovers at 350 and stuff like that things that he's struggling on he changes the course to make it fit for the course courses that we play on tour can't really argue with the results as no. he, he does turn that one a little too much i'll have a long putt to look at but new hole design coming this off season yeah maybe just make this this same gap but 580 feet well, i love this hole right here 250 hit your gap I, I say it often in commentary that it's one of the distances that we're kind of losing on the tour totally is the 250 yeah. footer. And this is going to go and check this deep. Out. These are the best players in the world struggling with yes. just 250. Yes. And that should be the first thing you learn, but it's always going to be hard. It's always going to be hard. It's yeah. always going to be touchy and it's always going to require elite disc selection and commitment. But this guy. He's also going to struggle yeah. as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, but that's a great shot. There's one tree to miss on that left side. You miss that one and you're good to go. On paper, this hole looks easy, but oh. ooh, in practice, uh, you know, with that rock there, you can't really slide it up. The bush is kind of creeping in from the right. The OB ever present on the right, if you kind of let it leak away from you a little bit. It has tons of tons of cool factors that do certainly make it a compelling hole, even though it's short. And it's not going to... I don't think give up any birdies. Oh, oh never oh, boy. Watch How many your mouth. Has this guy kidding. made. Watch your mouth ball. Yeah. His putting has been the best I've seen it, I feel like. We've seen every Look throw. Haven't we seen every throw of Chris Dickerson so far yeah. on Joe Yeah, Mets? he has not missed a lead card. You can card. go back and see the whole thing. And man, has the C2 been smooth. I mean, that was very unlikely, and he just made it look good. Proctor, I just looked up his stats. He's he's ninety one percent on the 91 season. Ninety one for the season. And <laughs> from insane. circle two, I think he's thirty four percent, which is eighth 
on tour. So he's the, basically the best putter on tour. And the volume. Is what that says. And because some of the guys that might be ranked higher than him are, maybe aren't having the volume. Like it's pro- it might not be a household name. It might be a guy right. that played three pro tours and putted real well. Yeah. Well, for example, like Isaac, statistically, Proctor is a better putter than Isaac. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about because of how flashy and good Isaac is yes. from outside the circle, especially when he's on Jomez, he's usually winning the tournaments. That was a beautiful slow-mo shot of Chris. That's the yes. smoothest release yeah, you could ever Yeah, didn't have any flutter there. Ask for. He should try putting like that. He, well, I don't know if he needs to, Jeremy. I mean, results, results. So you go from 250 and now you got 300. With a gradual hyzer, you got to hit this gap, slide it down the hill, have a little speed control as well because the out-of-bounds right behind the basket. 300 isn't really that easy is it well and it's always so hard anytime you have a hole like this that's significantly uphill but then with dangerous downhill behind i mean what and are you, the OB. To, you you can't use it's hard to use the ground play you got to clear the first one and then you just have to helicopter drop just perfect maybe bounce off a tree get to that perfect circle too where you always make <laughs> you know whatever you need to do but it, it's always difficult to clear yeah. crest a hill but then bring it down slow and with a shot like this, you ah. actually want to bring the disc from left to right so that you land it Whoa, soft. Whoa, what a break for Cole there. That was an early release, and that didn't look very Cole Radolin like on that release. That looked very tentative, yeah. maybe a little bit nervy. Well, you can understand why. This Mando is a, a killer. Look at the drop mm-hmm. zone. It's like yeah. 40 James feet in front of the pretty tee. bad as well. Ooh, this could roll up towards the OB, but it stays. That's in the players' heads for yep. sure. A little bit of a grip lock, and you're looking at a double bogey. Why has it got to be there. red? It can't just be a green mandatory. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. why is it? Look how that just sticks out like a sore thumb. Well, that's what I was trying to get at is trying to pull the disc from left to right as Isaac just absolutely butters oh, this down there. Oh, oh good, good tree. tree. Very good. But when you're pulling it from left to right, that would be the optimal disc shape to park this green. You don't want to do that because you're pulling towards that Mando. Yes. And so it makes you have to do this little hyzer awkward flip up at 300 feet. I mean, a great hole. Great hole, I think. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about Fox Run, or at least we think about Fox Run as the big open course here at the complex. And it starts you off with three technical holes. I mean, hole one is not overly technical, but two and three certainly are. We start to see the open stuff coming up in the next hole. And Cole able to capitalize on the incredibly good break. Yeah. And yeah, he's shaking his head like, what? How is that there? Well, watch the coverage, buddy. You got a great kick and you made a good putt. That's an important thing to do here at the World Championships. Right? Really any tournament, especially any Elite Series tournament where you're playing against the best in the world, you're going to get good breaks, you're going to get bad breaks. It's just what you do with those breaks. If you get a little bit of fortune smiling upon you, you better do something with it because it doesn't happen a lot. In my experience watching the world championships, it's usually the winner gets good breaks. They don't Absolutely. get it, they don't get a lot of bad breaks. That's the edge that these guys it's, play. Yeah, you it's, know, they're playing at such a high level. Teamdiscraft.com. All the team favorites on one site. Looking at hole four, par four, 630. Tricky drive here as you're blind to the landing zone, trying to throw the right hand and hyzer backhand, trying to fade back left and find safe land. Really no play for this second zone at 630 feet. You just have to try to get it up over those first trees and then down into safe area. Keeping in mind that one big bush can be a problem if you get too close to it. Uh, kind of finishing that point that we were just talking about there in the last hole, there's just so many factors that go into winning a world championship. And the players that get to that extra four or five strokes above like that big clump of players, uh oh. Ooh, never crossed. That's going to be an early OB. And oh no, Culver Dolan. That is big time trouble. I really like the mid range play again, but you got to give it height. Yep. There's the height you're looking for. Height and turn 
Let that thing swing back. That's going to be test that line on the left. That is got to be that's going to be that's just out. LB, I think. That's out. Wow. I do like that play mm -hmm. though. Heavy on the Anheuser with your most stable disc. Push it out towards that road and let it come back. Looks like Chris likes it as well. Yep, and that's not going for a bunch of distance, but I like that he's in the fairway and he's not going to be dealing with that big bushy tree in the middle of the fairway. Uh, yeah, I almost think distance is uh, the, the because that bush is waiting for you up there. Yeah, I'm not sure distance helps yep. you much. Yeah, distance only. Yeah, I agree because I mean the difference between the two. 30 that if you go past that bush to the tree to the basket 230 from there versus the 330 i mean who, who cares at this level yeah, these guys are yeah. getting up and down from yeah. the wide open 100 yeah. feet doesn't make a difference yeah wide open the difference between two and 300 on a calm day almost and, nothing I and think. that's the thing is it's a calm day you can see those yeah. those trees moving around a little bit in the background but it's just going to be swirly kind of like round two where it was you really couldn't predict which way the wind was going to blow from hole to hole but it's never windy enough to really be a factor. Ooh, and Ooh. that'll happen on this one. You Bad come roll. in and catch, hit those rocks perfectly. I've seen that many times. A really good shot. Roll him back, and he's going to have to show us that C2 skill. Oh, no. This looks high. He better have the weight right. That's a pretty good shot from being yeah, completely obstructed. It really is. And a, and a pretty good illustration of how much of an obstacle that bushy tree is. Is it a bush or a tree? I can't. I just call it a bushy tree. Well, I think that's a perfectly fair thing to call it. Yeah, thinking about this whole 300 feet, you got 330 in. 280, you yeah. got a really easy shot going yeah. in. And yeah. it, don't overthink it. This is a really bendy disc. You see that? how warped that was? Did he just... <laughs> Fold it in half before throwing it. <laughs> that, so, that was so funny looking. I didn't even see that. Isaac will have a short putt for the par. Meanwhile, Chris trying to knock down another C2 putt for the birdie. Mm. And how many times has he almost made a bunch of those as well? He has yeah. been knocking on the door of, I mean, nearly a dozen of other putts that are about that same range. Well, talking about good breaks and bad breaks, that definitely goes into the bad break category. That was a gimme. And then it rolled out to... Yeah, no doubt. Very tough putt. And Proctor will take the only birdie on the card. Hole four coming in right in the middle as far as difficulty. And it used to be one of the easiest, but letting that those bushes grow right off the tee has made the hole much trickier in my opinion. This Just hole not being able to see your landing zone. I think this is one of those holes that gets I mean obviously all the holes get harder in the wind, but this one really for some reason plays a lot more difficult when the wind picks up because your decision off the tee is really difficult to make. Well, you have to throw high and you have to throw with a yeah. variety of angles. So you don't really want to be doing that in the wind if you could help it. You guys see that leaderboard there? See who's in the lead? Who was it? Eagle McMahon, 12 under right now oh, with holes to play. Wow. Moving day is, he's moving in the right direction. Well, five, par three, 455 downhill, so not playing quite all that long. Important to hit the gap. I think the lower, the better. If you can kind of go through there just with pace and down low, use that hillside to your advantage, you can find a birdie here. You don't really want a bunch of height or a bunch of width Unless this is the most stable disc of all time. I think this is in danger. Of Slow down. Yep. Oh, my gosh. That is so exactly. deep. Going OB long in the headwind. Proctor's juicing. Somebody test that man. This is a little lower and nice and overstable. Can it get to the ground? This looks great. That, that is just, oh, yeah. that is just absolute thing of beauty. Wow. Bull's eye for Isaac. I think this hole is just lunch meat for him. It's Pick your angle. He just puts the angle out of the hand right there, and it, I mean, just punches it through the gap. Yeah. He's making it more of like a woodsy hole than a wide open fairway, you know? <laughs> and he throw, it's, uh, I love the little foxes that explode off the ground. <laughs> he's throwing so overstable yeah. that he can just aim at the bushes, you know, mm -hmm. and just hit it and trust that it's going to drag left. And that's a tougher shot for, let's say, somebody like Proctor, who has a lot more power. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
Chris just says, okay, I like your line, Isaac. I'll try that. It nearly matches it like in every way. That was beautiful, but not good enough to get a slow mess or a follow flight. Or a fox blow Maybe up. we'll give him a slow mess when he makes his putt from 20 feet. This needs help. Oh, no. Wow. And that was super grabby. And this turns into, well, it's Jeez. obviously automatic bogey, but five comes into play very fast. And they're going to say he crossed how far back? Pretty far back, actually. At least he can see the pin. If you're back there and you can't see the pin, that, oh, oh there's boy. the five. Oh, oh my what? goodness. Hey. Good we got backpacks, we got stakes, we got all sorts of things out here helping players stay in bounds. Where were those guys when I was playing this hole? I needed all sorts of help. And that's it. I had five is bonus birdie big time. Proctor missing that putt, I, I really feel like that is exactly what you were talking about, Germ, with the swirly winds. He's not missing that putt if he has a good read. If he's on, confident and comfortable. Well, he's probably confident with his putt, but he didn't yeah. get the drop. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, you, you saw him, like, kind of like, well, why didn't that happen? Yeah, like, he sure. putted a good putt. I, man, I had a 35 footer on this hole that I knew with my tail when I was going to drop. I put it at the band and it lifted. So, I mean, it was just a weird thing. Hey, we're looking at a guy we see a lot on this channel, Calvin Heimberg with the check in, not hole nine, pushing it down there, pin high almost. The only yeah. thing we've seen from him so far was just the very first hole of the tournament when he almost aced. We, we mentioned it at the end of round three. This is a guy, him and Macbeth, two players that we've been waiting to call their name, and we just haven't done it yet. But look at that front nine right there. I mean, if we've learned anything this year, we've probably learned that if the tournament lasted forever, Calvin would win. So, the, you know, five <laughs> rounds plays right into his hand. If you keep going and you keep going, you keep playing, this dude's he's going to catch up to you. Yeah, cream always rises, man. Well, six par three, 265, blind uphill with OB all around the basket, although a little friendlier than they often are here on the Pro Tour and in the PDGA majors. They put the OB line right up against this wall. They don't That's leave nice. you that little meter of room to go OB over there. So you actually don't see that many OB right. You really have to miss the shot pretty badly. As we've said many times, one of the easiest holes on tour. Expect these guys to have a little snack, I think. And if you ace this hole, you get a nice little uh, generator. Yeah, Furman generator, $1,500 right. value. That's, right. That's pretty so good So it's weird there. that Isaac went so low and just sort of laid Why it up. Why would you lay up in this situation? I don't understand it. Either I mean, way, he's got, layup, a, but he's got a bullseye birdie, but yawn. They also just posted, um, which I, I feel at this point is important, they posted the payout for yes. this year and it is thirty thousand dollars yes. for first place which fourth is. fourth place gets 10k yes Ooh. what we're in yeah. the new world yeah, yeah no doubt i remember i took second one year and i got twenty two hundred dollars so i was i had dinner with juliana tonight <laughs> and i asked her what it was like to see all these new payouts with the fifteen thousand for first oh, place no. at fpo wait a minute yeah, i think cole's just that Wow. wow. Okay. In circle. And she said, you know, at least I just wish that some of my world's wins would have got me four digits. Like she was winning worlds for 900 bucks. Wow. And getting away with one there. Cole, that is Again. a horrible two. drive, but makes a good putt. Last two holes. And then think back to hole three as well yeah. with the funny little kick. Yep. Certainly a little out of sorts with his throws. Every, yep. every hole has been a, a little off lately, but getting away with it in this moment and that's what you got to do to stay in contention see if he can kind of right the ship 215 players playing this hole between b pool and a pool over the last two days 215 players how many birdies i mean gosh uh 190 172 birdies that's 80 percent of the field 2.25 average well i didn't help that stat Kyle oh, Klein almost ooh. ringing up an ace here on 10. Actually, it was the first time I've ever missed the hole today. Hole six? Oh, wow. Yeah, ever. Oh, he's looking at the line. He thought he had <laughs> How did it. that not go in? I'm digging the chase card check-ins, the hot round check-ins, seeing 
all the action going on because there's so many people. Look at this. The whole screen was just within three strokes. At Discraft, we don't wait to see what the future holds. We build it. The future is in your hands. Hole seven, par five, 1265 feet. The wind a little bit down today, so maybe we see a little bit more attacking play off the tee. You really don't have much choice but to try for this little bubble in two if you are playing for birdie, which I expect all these guys will be. And that can leave you ideally around 300. If you keep it about 20 feet short of the line, you're going to have a little slightly downhill 300 that is somewhat slippery. You can kind of make the mistake of going OB deep, I think, a little bit easier than you're going to see people fail to cross. This is just a layup, though. If you do this layup, you want to get left. You want to open up that bubble for the hyzer play. I think that, I mean, that's going to be fine for Isaac, but mm -hmm. he, I think. A lot of right-hand, backhand players would prefer to be about 30 feet left of where that landed. This looks like a lot of angle. Like he's just thinking layup as well. So, I don't, I don't see the point in going over on on this hole, honestly, especially with these guys, because you don't have to get it very far. Even a 500 foot shot into the green is only playing about 400. Sure. And so, although it looks like Proctor is trying to get all of the distance. I can't see. Oh, there it is. And that looks great. It's that going is. to be easier for him. Guys, that's a full on yacht. I wouldn't doubt that these other two are going to get a similar score. Sure. If I, if I were to guess. Sure. And Ella showing the muscles. Ellen Proctor have been caddying for one another this year. It's been pretty cool to watch. Ooh. Pretty oh. right. Needs to really hurry. E, that last thing didn't help. And that's OB pretty early. Out of sorts for sure. And Definitely just, the timing is off. And what and what do you do now? You know, like how how aggressive where where do you try to land here? Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's I mean, sort of an interesting spot. I mean, he's gotta go first bubble. Maybe maybe he can go second bubble. I, I don't know. I it, that's a very it's a good good question. Because he's gonna he should be out of bounds early. It looks yes. like yeah, that's that's appropriate spot. And this has to be a second bubble the, effort. Yeah, for sure. Crushed. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so it's in bounds, but he's going to be 550, if not more. Probably more to the pin. Actually, yeah, that's going to be in the 600 range. I don't really know what you do from there. I think I know what he does from there, but I don't know what I do from there. Boom, boom. Perfect. Yep. In years past, that would have been out of bounds by 70 feet. Yeah, but they really opened up that left side. This is about a perfect layup. It just enough space to be able to of room. Yeah. fit that shot out there flat and get that late hyzer at the end. Yeah, you see two different That's layup really spots good shot. and two really great shots from there. Mm -hmm. The the overplay, like if we watch Proctor, it might be one for you to go into maybe if you get a really big one. And he is laying up. Cole is reserved to take the bogey. I mean, I don't. It could have been six eighty. Yeah, it probably it, was. It, 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 I think from five fifty, he's probably pulling the because he's three hundred there, and that traveled. Yeah, at least three fifty. Yeah, it was more than we thought. Yep. But yeah, Proctor, he, all he has is a little pitch up shot. I think going across, the only thing it really gives you is a little bit more comfort in being able to push this forward OB line and really leaving your last shot into the green yeah. close to that 300 mark as opposed to 370. See, this is 350. Yeah, the Chris did a, Chris and Isaac did great from their layups. Yeah, I, I do. I agree with what you're saying, Yuli. I think that the OB lines. Oh, don't no, you do it. No way. Not again. Not again. No way. That is get back. That is just wrong. After what happened on four, to do it again, that's crazy. Terrible breaks for Chris Dickerson so far. I was just gonna oh, say, I think geez. I think the OB lines probably could use a tweak in a way that would reward the yes, clearing shot. I, yeah. I agree with that because it really doesn't buy you much, and it should yeah. if you get that aggressive and you pull that off. Hundred percent agree. I and 
I think Calvin was even talking about this when it was the landing strip. It was a really tight fairway all the way down to 1,200 feet. This hole was so much harder. 5.6 average. Now it's like a 5.25. I was going to say this upshot too, once wow. you're that far Proctor. down the fairway, it's actually tough because yeah. it, in your practice, you're probably not getting that far. Sure. Honestly. And we've seen a lot of people kind of mess it up because it's a weird little range. That's Old. a good shot. Desperately needed to throw a good one there, and he does. Proctor, that was flirting with OB short, and that would have been a huge mistake, but just crept over the line. Now he has this for birdie, and this is a birdie. That's a good putt right there, showing off those that 91 to 34%. 34% from circle two is really good, especially... Wow, that is really good. But especially when you good think bar. about the volume that he's getting to circle too. Yes, yes. yes. You know, thirty-two-four percent is an insane amount. It is. And Nate, you you actually introduced a new statistic earlier this year, I believe, talking about the circle one misses to circle two makes and that ratio and, yeah. and basically. And what did they call that? The, uh, the p uh, putting barometer or the, something. Yeah, and and I think that he's leading the field he in was, that. He was when we checked in on it. I wouldn't be surprised if he still is. Back to Heimberg, now on 11 with just what a else could that do besides just beam. be a jump putt for eagle? Yeah, and it that sure is. is. No just... movement required. Let's go ahead and show Kyle Klein as well. He's out there shooting pretty well. Let's get Evan Scott in the mix as well. Winner of the 2023 Zoo Town Open. Nice little drift. You can see the difference there with Heimberg, just not using any lateral movement. So much power available to him. We haven't seen a lot of Evan Scott, but put it if I could explain his game, I would say that he's an Isaac Robinson style as far as angles with the backhand and then add a little sidearm. Mm -hmm. and, so, and he's a little more streaky with the putter, but when it's on, oh. very good putter. You, you can have a... Missed circle, missed inside 50 counter on, on Evan, yeah. and you're not going to put many fingers up. And I don't think he has the power of Isaac, but he gets it out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, well, he won on tour this year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you don't win on tour unless you get him out there. Well, I think he'd be the first person to tell you, like, there are certain courses that fit his style a bit more than sure. others. Sure, sure. Calvin not really interested in those pars either. Kind of Chris Dickerson-esque. Chris still holding on to the lead. Currently tied with Calvin, who's eight down through 11 with a bogey. Well, eight par three, four, 10. This one uphill and blind requiring full commitment on the big high Anheuser. When you throw it right, it sort of looks like it's going to go OB short. Uh, it's just a, it's a line you really need to trust and hit hard. Because if you let it start fading out on you, you're just not going to find circle one. That looks a little low to get there. I don't know. I kind of like it. A little deep of uh Oh, my God. Circle. No, that makes it to the circle's edge. Wow. Thought it was a little low to keep tracking, but it stayed up in the air long enough, fast enough just to get there. This is a pump. It takes a lot of spin to keep the disc moving this far right for this long. Ooh. This has got OB written all over it, I think. Yeah. A little too stable of a disc. We did have a left to right tailwind, which made it a little more difficult for them to have a disc that can handle that angle without trying to fight out. This one's trying to fight. Does it drop quick enough to avoid OB? Yeah. So it'll be a 50-something footer. Good shot in the conditions that we had. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to tell what it's going to do. It starts to fade out, and that is problematic for Cole. Another early mistake here in this round. Already three bogeys and looking to add a fourth one to the card unless he finds some magic. And 
It's going to be a one over starting nine for Cole. Well, sorry, we got one more hole. And Proctor! Bang. Full on 60 footer for par. He's good at that. I love seeing his line versus other players because he he really has a big wide arc in his putt. Picks a spot, commits, and he, he commits well. Yeah, Chris, that's what he wants to see is another roll. Good line, just didn't really have the speed on that one. Yeah, too easy for Isaac. Man, he just makes it look pretty easy, doesn't he, <laughs> <know. Yeah. laughs> it's just, it's, If it's just outside the circle, it's just forget about it, man. It's just a little tiny stepper. He's on four in a row right now. Oh, no way. Can't do that to yourself. Not the world championships. Not when you've come this far. Sometimes it takes so long to get a single birdie. You could just be a little bit off, get a bad roll. It takes so long, maybe four or five holes before you get one. But it takes no time at all to get a bogey. You can lose that stroke in a snap of the finger. Chris Dickerson is going to be thinking about that when he goes to sleep tonight. Hole nine, par three, 480. Out of bounds, left, out of bounds, right. Downhill the whole way. One of the most scenic holes you'll ever see, but man, does it have teeth. Usually very windy. I mean, whatever you have, fairway driver that's gonna land yourself uh, probably right around circle's edge. You don't see a lot of park jobs on this just because the danger is so um, close to the basket on that right side. And we're, but we're gonna go up to Calvin Heimberg on hole 12. His hot round check and he's still getting things going. Just blast. <laughs> that is full on monster like, this mode. Is, this is the eagle alert. Yeah, th he's in 450 to the pin. Oh, I mean, it's over. That's he, an eagle. It's, it's been eagled. <laughs> no, Might be a, albatross. That's an eagle he threw. Yeah. It, no way. Oh. Tap an eagle. Let's go, Calvin. Okay. You dirty dog. That'll wash away that bogey real quick. Back to nine. It's something about hole seven. Five, seven, and nine. It doesn't matter if it's a calm day out here or not. It's always windy on those three tees. This is going to check up just fine. I think that's his play. High, fast disc into that corner pocket. I like that a lot. And hopefully Safe. two inches outside the circle so he can just step it in there one more time. More driven. He wants all of it on this <sighs> one. Oh, no. That is like the most common thing you see on hole nine, right there. Starts off so good, and for some yep. reason it just, just pulls you pulls to the right. Pulls every single time, it seems like. We did see Chris throw an absolute butte here in round two where it just kept turning the whole way. This time it's flipping up, riding that line, and no. another OB. And that could have been... A roll that could have been the roll he needed to cancel one out. I mean, that's you see that roll down all the time. That almost did it. Yep. I think ninety percent of the time it rolls. Yeah. That's what's so just, sad about that. It just that. needs a foot or two. This is in trouble. Yo. Oh, but no, it's not. The trees just burped that disc right back into the fairway. And he, yeah, I understand. That is. He'll take it, of course. But, man, you'd love to figure out what's going on and fix it in the moment. Long par bid comes up short for Proctor. It'll be another drop shot. Chris trying to avoid that same fate. And he's short. All over that koozie, man. Yeah. I mean, this is a going to be a big moment right here for yeah i was yeah. going to say isaac yep because all these guys are just all over the place if he can make this he can really grab a stronghold on on the momentum on this card 
Ooh, close, but still five under on the front nine. He is separating himself right now from the rest of these guys who've just been struggling over the last few. Even Proctor's big putt on last hole was just for a par, so nothing in the the green department for these guys lately. And in the end, it will be a one over front nine score for Cole Radolin. Not like not what he was looking to do with his first ever lead at a world championship. And it's and a tough thing to survive, I think. In, yeah. In a five round tournament that's gonna be won somewhere likely in the forties. To have one of those oh, nines yeah. sticking out at you mm -hmm. as yep. a one over. Yep. It's going to take just phenomenal golf to yeah. come back from that. You, you can have a slow nine, but yes. a truly bad nine, I don't know that there's enough Hard wiggle to room to come back We'll from see, that. though. I mean, he's dropped down to 12th place. Certainly a few back right now, they're leaders, but um, he's, uh, yeah. It's, it's you know, we get to take a little break between the front nine and the back nine. He does not. He's going straight over to hole 10. He's already teed off. We're going to have to catch up with him here in a moment. In, but, in honor of that, <laughs> let's just do, let's go straight ourselves. Okay, let's that's skip a good idea. The break. Let's skip the break and let's get right into it. Thank <laughs> you to the Founders Club. We're going to bring you that back nine a little quicker than usual.